Hey everybody, this is Jenny. And I'm Jess. And this is a walk in the woods at midnight um, where we review films that are horror films, I should say, that are anything from psychological horror to regular old horror to spirit horror to <laughs> demon horror. We love it all, except for maybe straight up slasher films, although we should probably give those another little bit of a chance. We'll do some work on that. But um, we like to find these films on platforms that you're familiar with, like Hulu, Netflix, um, Amazon Prime, stuff that you can watch on your couch in the comfort of your own home. So that's my my favorite part. That's a big that's a big <laughs> must have for me. Right, because I don't like people and I don't like leaving <laughs> the house. I like people. They just make me very tired. <laughs> Unless I really, really like them. And I like all of you guys, Jess, obviously. Who doesn't like Jess? <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> so, um, so this story, the, what we watched was, do you want to give the title? Uh, it was Hulu's Into the Dark Anthology. Um, and the title was Culture Shock. Right, exactly. So, um, I was not really very familiar with Hulu's Culture Shock series, like horror anthology. But before. In, Into the Dark is the anthology. Oh, sorry. Into the Dark. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I wasn't either, but I saw Culture Shock specifically on all on all those uh, top 30 lists that I always see. Yeah. That I draw a bunch of suggestions from. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, before Jenny gets into the... Um, the overview that she always does but before we even start we need to say that if you are remotely triggered by political events don't even watch our overview yeah yeah because i i don't like politics at all i skip the front the only thing i read is the sports page and the only thing i watch on television is sports and I totally ignore, <laughs> it's my wife that tells me who the president is and tells me who <laughs> are, and I just, I, it's a, I totally don't dig politics. So if you're at all triggered by the illegal immigrant situation, don't listen, don't watch this movie, don't listen to this at all. We, and we can't help but talk about politics regarding this movie, even if we wanted to. Mm -hmm because it's just tied into the movie so heavily. So that's just your warning uh, about this particular um, film. So there you go. Great, yeah, great, you know, great caveat. I think that's that's definitely true. Um, so um, with that being said, um, the plot line of this film is it's kind of like, well, first of all, let me say this. So this was um, released on the 4th of July, I think just this year, I think, just in 2019. I could oh, be wrong. I didn't know that. And it's interesting because based on what I've read about the series, they do some holiday-based, um, you know, like, stories within this this anthology so this one was for the fourth of july which i thought was incredibly clever mm -hmm. um to do and definitely like a you know definitely like a subversive look at kind of like what's going on in the world right now with that uh, you know so i will i'll kind of stop there and just get into a little bit about the director the director's name is Gigi Saul Guerrero I know it's like the double R at the end. Oh, okay. um, everybody can can tell me how to pronounce that later. <laughs> but um, she is the director of this film, and she is she is an immigrant herself. She was um, born, I believe, she was born in Mexico, and her parents came to brought her to the U.S. Um, to L.A. when she was a. Uh, you know, adolescent, early adolescence, we'll oh, say. Okay. So, and then they decided like, no, don't, you know, I think we want to move back. So they moved back to Mexico and then they decided to move to Canada and then they, they stayed there. So she has her own, I believe she has her own production company um, specifically focusing on horror and kind of like the Latinx and maybe more specifically Mexican um, 
style horror. Oh. I don't know what that is necessarily. I didn't get that far <laughs> into figuring this out. Yeah. I know what Italian style horror is. I know like Dario Argento. I know, yeah. I mean, I know about like Mexican realism and there was a lot of that, I think in here of that kind of fantastical sense of the real. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to speculate any more about what that might be, but um, it starred Martha, Martha Higordera, wait, Higoreda. I want to pronounce her name correctly because she was so, so good. I thought. Is Marisol? Marisol. She played Marisol. Um, she was super strong, super mm. vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with her character and I still yeah. love. Um, and then um, the other main characters would be um, Oscar who we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, he's sort of the bad guy or one of them um, that she knows from Mexico. Um, Santo, she meets, um, obviously meets Saint. Also um, Marisol is the name for the Virgin Mary. It means like the Virgin Mary kind of like in isolation or something. So, you know, this being like a very heavily Catholic country and they talk about the religion and you know ev everything so anyway i thought that's probably something to keep in mind um and then there was ricky who was a little boy who was going to take a trip across the border with them and he was south american he actually wasn't mexican so anyway uh this is like in three acts i would say act one is learning about who Mar marisol is um, and you know, she is, and, and her basically like she lives in Mexico. She's, she is Mexican born, lives in Mexico. She's very pregnant when we meet her. Um, there are flashbacks to Oscar, who we mentioned, who, um, had raped her. She uh, had also left her at, the, no, don't say are that. You, are you spoiling that? I don't think so. I mean, it's introduced in the first like five minutes. Oh, okay. So, because he's, when they're... Okay, he's the bad boyfriend. <laughs> he's the bad boyfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. Um, and so there's sort of like that going on. He kind of left her at the border. She had tried yeah. to cross before. <laughs> he raped her first, and then he left her at the border. This poor Yeah. Woman. And then, so she found her way back home, but she was going to go a second time. So um, fully pregnant this time, super pregnant. Um, and so it's, you know, she meets the coyote who is like the border crosser guy yeah. in, in this bar. And he basically, she pays him. He's going to take her over the border. Um, and she meets um, a couple other people in that border crossing. Um, it's, this first part of the movie, which we'll talk about a little bit more, I think was harrowing and scary and gives you, um, it gives you the journey from their point of view. I think yeah. the way the camera worked, everything, you were there with them. You were seeing what they were seeing. Um, so anyway, part two, see, it's hard. Do we like explain the plot because is it is part two going to give it away? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we we can just say, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, that's a good question. I, we can say they end up in America. They end up in America, and then it's extremely ideal, and but then something can, is kind of off. Yeah. And then I would say now we would talk about the movie and now spoilers start. Yeah. Part so say, three is really kind of part yeah, three. You part, have to kind of just like you can't really know that or else it will spoil the movie. Yeah. So, so part two is making it into America and part three is their experience in America then, would you say? I think part one is, yes, yeah, the getting into America. Part two is being in America. Okay. Part three is being in the real America. Okay. Um, so 
let's say spoilers start at the 10 minute mark because that's like in five seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna spoil, we're gonna talk about the movie itself mm -hmm. and how they, um, the, I, first of all, up until the, from the beginning of the movie to when they get to the border is extremely nerve wracking to me mm -hmm. um, because it's very real life. Yeah. For a poor immigrant, for a poor Mexican trying to get to a better life. I, who is also uh, pregnant. <laughs> who's also pregnant. Um, now I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm going to try and stay as apolitical as I can because we're just going to, we're trying to review it as a movie. Yeah. Um, and so I don't want to try and come down on either side of the argument. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say I, I understand both sides of the argument. And so I'm not going um, to try to take a position, but I will say that it's terrifying to see what the young woman goes through to try to get to a better life, being pregnant, attempted, uh, she gets attempted rape at least one time. Um, on yeah, her actually way. raped one time on a way to Florida the first time. Yeah. Almost raped. And then attempted rape again while she's pregnant, just at the Coyotes uh, stash house. Um, <clears throat> then they get to the border and the drug cartel is there. Uh, uh, killing somebody and they decide they want to play with these guys that they discover Marisol and her group and they decide they're going to play with them uh, meaning they're going to like start killing them and the U.S. government shows up and starts killing the cartel and Marisol blanks out blanks out and wakes up in America but I mean up until then it's all extremely realistic and scary yeah. That what that must be what it's like trying to get to America and whether you like it or not, it, it did a good job of being terrifyingly realistic and anything that shows um, the day to day experience of somebody's life. I mean, life can be extremely scary. For some people, just like their day-to-day -day experience, and um, when you get it shown like that, to me, that's real-life horror. Yeah, and to me, that really, I agree with you totally. And I felt like it's so funny because, like, at least for me, and again, I'm going to try to just present the movie politically the way that I feel that it was just represented. So it's we're just talking about it as art as a film yeah. um i felt very much uh like i felt sort of very privileged at yeah. that moment i felt very white i felt very yeah. you know like sitting in my heat controlled home not worried that i was going to be raped at any moment <laughs> that is something that women always we're always like on the lookout you know but yeah. um it's really you know, to be in uh, in that much danger and to be in that much of a desperate situation is really something that we don't get a taste of very much. Um, and it's interesting because I have, um, I was just talking to Jess about the fact that I was, you know, I, I was working a lot. We were doing a lot um, with regard to some like, you know, merger acquisition stuff recently. And so, um, the woman who leads PR for our entire company is um, lives in Mexico City, and she is uh, was born in Mexico. Um, and so she uh, said something along the lines at some point about you know it would be fun to you know I mean she's in she's upper middle class she's you know she's also got it's not like whole Mexico is terrifying it's like there are small towns and there are border towns where. Things are rough and that's, you know, no joke. And the cartel owns stuff and, you know, but 
um, she was saying like, it would be kind of cool to go take my family and go to like maybe Europe, live in Europe for a while, like on a visa or in the US. And she said something like, as long as it's not like, um, you know, she mentioned like a few states where it was like kind of sparsely populated. And, and I was with a couple other people, Americans, and we said, those states though are really beautiful. They're like you mean, gorgeous. Oh, states in the United States? In the United States, yeah. And um, she was like, and so we said, she, those are really beautiful states. Like, why wouldn't you want to live there? You know? And she said, because I'm Mexican, <laughs> you're white. Like, you know, you don't understand how it would be for someone who came from Mexico and it may be a different situation in some smaller um, towns or where there's a lot of sensitivity around um, people coming to the US. And it was, I, I didn't really judge that. I don't know, you know, but I, it was interesting to me that she felt that way. And it was a similar situation. It was a similar feeling that I felt when I saw this, when I was like, wow, that's a lot of shit I don't have to worry about. And yeah. I take that for granted massively. Um, so anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was harrowing. It's hard to not kind of become emotional on some level when you do see just people in, in, um, in de desperate situations. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I marvel at this woman's acting ability, the woman who played Marisol, because she went from impeccable Spanish to perfect English without an accent. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, when she started speaking English in the very beginning, uh, when she wakes up in America, she went, mm -hmm. like she couldn't believe she was speaking English. It wasn't. Yeah, and, like in part two, like act two. Almost. Yeah. yeah. And it was coming out of her mouth flawlessly. So I, <clears throat> kudos to her for being able to pull that off. Yeah. That, that is not an easy thing, I think. You know, for somebody, I mean, I get somebody that's Australian pulling off an American accent, but somebody that's, because that's just the English language, or Tom Holland, Spider-Man, you know, being an Eng being a British actor learning to speak Brooklyn, um, <laughs> but being a Spanish, native Spanish speaking uh, person, and then speaking impeccable English, I think that's an accomplishment in itself. And then she's a wonderful actress on top of that is really uh, an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she it, she was excellent. And the way that she, um, and it was, it's interesting too, because she was able to kind of like switch between those languages and infuse both of them with, um, with just a lot of pathos and meaning. And like, yeah. she, she used, she just like, it's not only like she, she spoke it flawlessly and she, but she used it flawlessly, you know, to like to kind of like convey this strength, but also cause she, she's super vulnerable. So she's got, she has this vulnerability, but she's also sort of this strong source of, um, you know, of, of strength. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, strong I'm, source of strength. That's a good way to put it, that she's both at the same time, which I thought was interesting. Yeah, you know, she yeah. wakes up all of a sudden in America in this flowery outfit. In yeah, flowery we should say room. right after she passes out. She Yeah, she gives birth to her baby. Then she wakes up in this flowery outfit in this flowery room, perfect room, um, speaking all impeccable pastels. English. Yeah. Um, and it seems like a wonderland where she, first of all, it's odd that she's, she, you know, she's not, the, the woman she's staying with won't let her hold the baby just yet. She says, oh, why don't you go out and see your new home? And so she goes out and sees um, this America that's this idealized America where everybody's smiling and everybody, you know, all all cultures, all ethnicities are represented and um, everybody's smiling, getting along and they're all getting ready for the 4th of July celebration. And she doesn't know 
what we know that it looks weird. She's just thinking, wow, America's awesome. <laughs> yeah, which is probably for, I don't know now if it's still this way where it's like, you know, media is so prevalent, but people I think do sort of idealize the US in a lot of ways. I think that, and in some ways, um, maybe correctly, you know, I mean, some some countries don't have, you know, like a, like I, I work with someone in, 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 I hope not, God, I hope this stuff doesn't offend people, but um, one of my friends from a, from a country um, that's, is very overcrowded and, you know, um, he said that, you know, there really aren't the, the food standards that there are in the U.S., no matter how tenuous they get to be in the U.S. And so, right. But there's no, there's, you know, like pollution in some of these places are out of control. Again, probably driven by different factors from maybe more developed countries. But still, it's, you know, there are things here that we take for granted that are, in fact, pretty cushy. Um, but um, yeah, I think a lot of people do and did sort of think that way about what American life is like, and it was very idealized. Um, I also want to just bring up really quickly that um, if you guys, a David Lynch fan, you know this always, um, he, this is very much like his idealized form of a suburb, you know, this weird, like, this very um, shiny surface level with just kind of evil beneath it, you know, like it's this veneer of perfection. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it, I mean, you, I immediately thought of the movie back in the se early seventies that was on TV, the Stepford wives. Yes. The step. <laughs> yes, totally. Yeah. hundred um, percent. Yeah. Um, cause I remember watching that movie as a kid and, um, so everything is shiny and perfect. And <laughs> it's always funny. She keeps waking up in a different outfit. It's so like the same dress, but slight, like a different pastel color. Yeah. And she's never under the covers. She's always on top of the bed, which is funny. Um, and her, her day-to-day -day existence well you can you can talk about um because we're really getting into the meat of the movie now yeah. of what she's discovering as she's sort of peeling back the layers of um what's going on in this idealized version of america yeah yeah she um i think that she starts to she's she starts to sense that something is off. There are a few things that are really bizarre. Like everybody is very just smiley and friendly. And when she starts to see the people who she knows, she remembers them from crossing the border and for, you know, doing all of, all of these things. She sees them and she sees that they're basically like brainwashed and they're mm -hmm. living in this. So a lot of, I don't know if you've ever seen Get Out, if you've seen Get I haven't Out, seen yeah. it yet. Everybody's okay. telling me to say it. See it's it. very, it's very, it's there are a lot of similarities, I think. And I oh, think really? it's the same, yeah. I think it's the same um producer or something. Something is in common with with that that film and the makers of the film and stuff. Oh. So um, yeah, so she starts to kind of figure out that like things aren't um quite right and there are a couple times when um like with the little boy who she sees in the schoolyard and she goes up and she's like hi and he's just sort of like hi nice to meet you <laughs> you know and she's like what the hell is going on yeah. um and she she sing she starts to he can't remember her and so she starts to sing the national mexican national anthem to him which he was taught by I, these, really by kind of like these rough guys who were like handling the border crossing. Yeah. And he starts to remember and become visibly distraught by it. 
Um, and then he sort of gets called away by his teacher and he's sort of back to that same numb, you know, s sense of, of the world. Um, same with the guy who raped her. She sees him too, Oscar. And he's in that same uh, state of mind. And so she's sort of like, I mean, that I thought was also sort of weird. And you could go down that road where it's like, you see, because it's almost like, I almost felt like half the reason why she went to the US, or maybe a big chunk of the reason, is to seek revenge on that guy, or at least to go to him and be like, you know, like, whatever. I don't know. Because she's pregnant I with hate him. you. He's she's pregnant, pregnant with his baby. Yeah. So the baby is like from the rape. Right. So um, anyway, so yeah, so she's she's seeing this over and over. And at one point during the um, during the, the time when she I mean, she's there for probably five days. And you're right. She can't like they won't let her hold her baby and the woman who is caring for her and caring for the baby is a white lady. She looks right out of like, in, in fact, the director said that she looked at a lot of the 1950s posters oh. of Americans, like this really super idealized version of people. Everybody's white, everybody's smiling aprons on, you know? Um, and I mean, the, you know, whatever. I mean, that that probably that kind of like idealism in your mind doesn't kind of work for anybody, which we talked about, I think, two weeks ago in our last movie when we were talking about not the witch, but autopsy of Jane oh, Doe. Yeah. Yeah. Where the mom killed herself because she thought she had to be this sort of idealized wife. Right. But anyway, here's this sort of automaton white lady who is sort of keeping her baby away from her and at first she sort of like goes along with it like oh well thanks for you know taking care of her okay you know and she's like go out and help and you know and she's starting to feel this visceral danger of like why isn't this woman giving me my baby yeah <laughs> you know um so, oh, but at, at one point when they're in the cafeteria and the food is all awesome and everybody's always super shiny happy and um, there, she at one point, she realizes what's going on. She breaks through this sort of membrane and she figures out where they actually are. And when she stands up and sings the Mexican national anthem. Oh, yeah in that in that cafeteria it's so moving it's just such a um it's such a fight to kind of keep that culture alive and to make people remember um and so i was i thought that was really emotional i thought it that was pretty um pretty effective yeah I so do you want yeah, yeah, that was very touching. And it also kind of gives you insight into how she is feeling about where she is and, and the fact that she's sort of like, um, maybe I don't like this. Like, maybe I, maybe I want to go home. Like, maybe I was shooting too high and this is really not what I thought at all. Yeah. Um, so she, you can see her start to kind of pull back to that. And I think at one point, I think she starts speaking Spanish again, which is a really, um, it's, it's definitely like her taking control of her own culture and background and country. And so I found a lot of that really um, beautiful and empowering. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that she, I think that the director could have gone several different ways and does kind of touch upon a few things that do make you think of the current crisis at the border. But um, I think that she wanted to show one person's perspective and journey here and really try to like, you know, blow that out of the water. So the fact that she didn't, at first I was kind of like, 
why why aren't we getting more of that? And I think there was there were a few touches upon it that were very very light. And I think that the woman who was keeping her baby from her was certainly a signifier of that. Um, but I think that it was uh, an interesting take on that situation right now. Yeah. And so uh, anybody that hasn't seen the movie and is still with us is probably wondering, well, where's the horror element? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We really haven't touched upon what what the scary part of this is and that is it there's a there's a mayor of the town and he's uh, uh you know he's very cheerful he's uh, a tall nice looking white guy a young white guy um and he's um very helpful to marisol and he um uh usually um he assigns people things and then he he walks away after his the assignation of things and she decides to follow him and he disappears in a uh in the middle of the street and she follows him and she disappears in the middle of the street and now i can't remember because i saw this two weeks ago does she does she appear in the control room she she does she she like kind of like push you can see like a ripple almost in the reality yeah and so she kind of pushes against this membrane and then she goes and falls in and she wakes up and she's sort of like strapped down okay that's what happens okay you, yeah you from here and tell tell them why what she yeah 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 finds yes. herself in she pushes through the membrane yeah and wakes up Mm -hmm. And she's she's sort of like immobilized in a way, and she's scared. Like she's just, I mean, because she's she's got these kind of like what we slowly figure out are these like virtual reality goggles on, and she's hooked into this massive system of like tubes and all of these things that are connecting all of the people who were traveling with her and more probably. Um, and so, you know, the, the guy who was the mayor in this virtual reality is actually someone who goes through and sort of, sort of like cares for the, these people. He, he's, it's, it's clearly like he feels a lot of ambiguity about this. He's sort of like a young scientist. He's with, it's like a privatized, um, uh, kind of like a privatized company. And they're trying to figure out a solution for like the, pe the people who are coming over the border. So what they want to do is according to the guy who plays Creed in um, Office, in, in the Office, he um, he was sort of the he was one of the big bats. He was like the top, like the main um, scientist right. who was sort of driving all of this and going and saying to the to the younger guy, like, you know, look, I know you don't feel great about this, but listen, we're giving these people the America that they want. We get rid of you know, the issue with people coming in and overcrowding and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so this is actually a great solution for everybody all around. Right. But it's not, it's not real, you know? And so he's in a, particularly with Marisol, who is this very strong personality, this very strong woman um, who's gone through a lot and she's clearly very smart and she's breaking out of this. Um, and, and she's so still pregnant and she's still pregnant. Yeah. And so she's trying to, and so the, the younger guy talks to her when the scientist, the main scientist is kind of gone and he's sort of like, listen, just, you know, um, give me a little time, like, you know, trust me, like I'm going to, you know, and so, she kind of she goes back on into the virtual reality but she what's interesting to me is she she doesn't really trust him 
she wants to bust the hell out of there <laughs> and she wants to take everybody with her. Right. And so, um, you know, I thought that to me was at least to me, it felt significant that here was this, this white guy saying like, don't worry, I'm going to save you, you know? And she's kind of like, well, screw that. I'm saving myself and yeah. all of these people. Because so, that's what Oscar said to her too. Yeah. Before yes. he raped her and left her at the border. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's had it with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so she, she, she um, ends up, I think, I think we actually said some of the things that she did in part three of the movie uh, that we, we said she did in part two. I think she actually did in part three where she was really starting to rebel. That yeah. may have been when she sang the Mexican national anthem and was right. really trying to sort of wake people up. Um, and so she, she kind of like enlists the help of, the, one of the guys who traveled with her, and in fact, was the one who saved her from getting raped. Um, Santos. Santos, so Saint, yeah. So he, he, um, he ended up um, being sort of like he he was able to break that, you know, that break with like what was going on. He was listening to her, and they. That's when, I think when they started speaking Spanish, which was yeah. I think, significant, um, and so. Anyway, they finally like I th God. Why well, can't I remember how they get out? They sort of break out, and everybody starts to wake up. Yeah. Um. And one thing I can say is that the oh, she also starts to realize that the woman who has her baby—that's not her baby. That's like a virtual representation. Yeah. Of her baby. Right. And it's sort of like, why? What are they planning to do? Are they going to take the baby from her in real life? Are yeah. they? So that's all unclear. But anyway, when they all wake up, and I mean, you see this when she wakes up, but they're basically in, like, they're basically in what looks like a kind of a medieval, like, Frankensteinian chamber. It's not like a like a hospital no. kind of thing that you would expect. It's like a dirty basement kind of with this giant machine it, it reminded me of um the jacob's ladder scene where he's in that crummy yeah. hospital scene um like it this, was disturbing where they were yes yeah yes exactly it was it was a lot like that and it was a lot like that paralysis of you know like you're kind of at the mercy of whoever is standing over you and has power over you kind of, you know? So um, anyway, I, you know, they're, you know, the, after they start to sort of break free, what they realize is that, um, you know, they realize that the, you know, kind of, kind of what's been going on and, um, the main scientist has asked every has asked all of the fellow workers who are there um, to just shoot them on site to not let them leave. Right. Um, and so they try to do that. They thwart that, and they escape into back into the desert, kind of. And so everything is sort of dark and shitty again. Um, and she, yeah. She oh, decides, go ahead, go well, ahead. Well, she decides she wants to go back home. Yeah. The They're others, all gonna go toward America. Yeah, the others decide to go to America, but then there's also um uh, a long I mean, this is where it gets really political. This is there's uh, also um uh, a play on Fox News that um that that twists this ending from uh, like a like a research on these people, like they're bugs in an experiment. And it twists it into uh, immigrants turn on their benefactors and destroy them, and they send a reporter to. And this is where I I, I need to get um, uh, my daughter's best friend over who speaks fluent Spanish, because they send a the Fox News surrogate sends. Uh, somebody to the coyote's house um, 
to interview him and all they do is start speaking Spanish to the guy. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what they're saying because I know they're making fun of him and saying, you know, we don't have a clue what you're saying, but I want to know exactly, this is at the very end of the movie. Yeah. When, when Fox, the Fox News uh, uh, parody says, you know, the, the marvelous US benefactors were attacked <laughs> by these evil immigrants. Um, <laughs> And the immigrants have now scattered to the winds, and we found a coyote's house. And I want to find out what these guys are saying in Spanish. I feel like he says something like, "The devils walk among us wherever we go." I might be that might be wrong. Hang on, why don't why don't he does we? Does say a lot in Spanish, he did, um, but he... but he, he pretends not to understand what the guy. I mean, he says something in English, but he does say a lot in Spanish. And pretends not to understand what the reporter's saying. I know he's making fun of him. Yeah. I'm guess what? I'm looking that up right now. Normally I would go, I'm gonna do some research on that, but now I'm doing research. Oh, seeing so if you can find a translation of it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Let's see. Into the dark. Okay. Ugh, damn it. I'm not gonna wait, make all you guys wait. I'm gonna add it in a comment. Oh, okay. At the end. If we can figure it um, out, we'll add it in a, in a comment then. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. actually I could have my, I could have my uh, friend Louis, Louis speak Spanish. I could have him watch it and Ooh. have him, uh, he, he likes our show. So he, he also recommends a lot of horror to me, so. Ask him what he ask him ask him what he said, and then um, we can uh, and then everybody can talk about it in terms yeah. of movie. Okay. So, what did you think of this? So, here's what I thought of this. I I loved that the director created an authentic experience. I thought that the middle part. I thought that what she was saying was pretty original. I thought that the um, that kind of like idea of the American dream and kind of like what that really means and kind of like it's kind of there's a lot of similarity no matter where you go and some you know most situations um so I liked that a lot I, the one thing that I really wanted though was to make it very clear why she was leaving Mexico. It did look like she was living in a smaller town. It looked like, you know, she, her, I don't know the, if it was her mom or her aunt or somebody who had all of the young women near her and was like, who's, you know, which ones, who's not pregnant, you know? And yeah. I don't know, I wanted to find out more about what that meant, but I don't know if it has to do with, with rape or, or what, but Mary Saul says to them, you don't want to end up like me. Right. Um, and the one girl is says, you know, um, I can't use this birth control because she gives birth control to the girls. And she says, I can't use this. I'm Catholic. I can't use this. So it does give you a sense of that double bind that the women are in. Right. You know, not allowed to use contraceptives. So, but, you know, you're, you're it's you know, it's something, you know, you very well may get get raped. But sorry, you're. You know, yeah, them's the breaks. So yeah. you did kind of see some of that. Um, but and then also there you did see a lot of the posters about kidnapped girls and people um when she's making a phone call at one point from Mexico. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. Okay, okay, yeah. And I so it didn't, you know, it didn't hit you over the head, and that's good, but it almost seemed like she was going to the US for revenge on this guy. And I was kind of like, can you, like, is there something more substantive that we can un help understand why she feels like she needs to get the hell out of there? I just didn't really have, have that, you know? So I, but I mean, I think it's worth watching. I think it's, I think that um, it's, uh, I would still say, I would still say it's 100% worth a watch. It, I mean, I think parts one and two were stunning. Really good, I thought. Yeah. Okay. How about you? Um, I, 
I think it's more of a sci-fi thriller than it's really horror. Yeah, it is. It um, is true. Yeah. So I I think as a sci-fi thriller, I I think it's I give it an A. Mm -hmm. Um as so I don't think anybody's gonna be there aren't any real jump scares or anything as a horror movie. Um yeah. so I um but as a as a sci-fi thriller, I mm -hmm. think this is an A, and I really liked it a lot. I liked all the performances. I liked all the ideas. If you can, if you can, if you can just kind of go with the flow of the political statements that are being made, um, and not get upset about them, then I think you'll find this movie is very rewarding. And there's an extremely great revenge death at the end that. Um, <laughs> is 100% worth it. Um, so uh, I I really enjoyed it. Um, and it didn't, I I want to see more on Hulu's Into the Dark series now. Um, I don't really, I mean, I subscribe. I, I have Hulu because it, it came with my Spotify account and I don't really watch too much Hulu. So I'd like an excuse to watch more Hulu. And mm -hmm. so, I'd I'd like to find out um, if there are some more shows in in this Into the Dark series. I'd like to see some some really good jump scary things if they've got them. So yeah, yeah. I heard really that they're like not quite as, I heard they're not quite as good as as these. Uh, uh, as well, a, never mind them. I know because that's what I thought. I'm like, oh, really? A horror anthology? I'm in, you know. But no, it was. They, I mean, and it's still that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not worth watching or that it's not fun or whatever. But I was kind of like disappointed when I read that. I was like, oh. But I interrupted you, so. Oh no, I'm done. Recommend it as a sci-fi, and I think it's worth watching as a sci-fi thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. This wasn't classic horror. It would, it, you know, and yeah, it's uh, nothing really supernatural about it. Parts of it were horrifying. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, so I don't know. It's a, uh, it's, it's one of those crossover kind of things, but anyway, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So thank you for watching. Um, Feel free to leave a comment. We always respond to comments. Please give us a like if you can. Uh, even if you can't, give us a like anyway. Um, please feel free to subscribe. And uh, as always, peace and love, peace and love. Thank you very much. And thank you to Jenny for co-hosting with me. Thank Anytime. You.